Variation is a very important tool for the ancient musician and for Baroque music. For this reason, today I want to show you a very interesting kind of variation you can use in your compositions based on a specific and beautiful technique that Johann Sebastian Bach wrote in his partita in E minor. Let's see it. Welcome to this new video, I'm Ricardus, a Musicus Practicus, and in this video of improvisation elements I want to show you this passage, or better, when in the second part of the first part of this uh, toccata, you know, Sebastian Bach uses the variation with the tool inversion in a very interesting way. First of all, let's focus on the first part, I'm talking about this point. <laughs> Let's see the structure. The structure is a bass, bass, singing Fa, Mi, Re, O. And since we are in B minor in this point, we have two hexachords. The first one in uh, bass on D major, so bass on D, ut, and the second one bass on A, ut, the fifth degree of D major, because B minor has shares the same environment of D major then in order to know all the things how to read with solmization there's Fami et Mi Fa e Sosta Musica the solmization course I prepared for you if you want to learn to read music to read, <laughs> to read music as an ancient musician because there are specific rules and you must know them now the counterpoint in the top voice so in the orange voice is based on the same melody as you can see Fa Mi Re U but what happens on the downbeat is that we have another sol fa mi re, another little melody here belonging to the other hexachord, the one on the fifth degree of D major, so A major. Sol fa mi re. And then the interaction creates this structure. As you can see. Of course, we have other voices, other harmony, uh, harmonies, other lead to fill up the harmony. Four six, two four six, and then two, three six. So if we look at the harmony, we have six. We have then six four. Then two four six with the sharp four, and then three six. Just play these notes with the left hand or together. This way. And what happens in the top voice is quite interesting for other reasons. For example, here we have this. And then contrary motion, because this note is the most important one. And then we have the descending from the two, the sending leaf from the second degree, so B minor, C sharp, which is very idiomatic, also in the music in the gun style or by Robert Gerding, and this thing is pointed out in a very clear way, this descending leaf. Now, we have another element to consider, that all these two bars now are inverted, how just the top voice is now in the lower part, and here lower part is inverted in the top. So the bass becomes the melody and the melody becomes the bass because it's written in double counterpoint. So this third becomes sixth. This is how double counterpoint works. So we have a first kind of variation. We have the pairing of the first element and then with the inversion of the two voices. As now let's see the sound of this passage before passing to the same part but in E minor later where there is a very interesting thing. Let's play it. Perfect. And now let's come to the second part. Here we are, just in the following page, in E minor, and we have the same thing. 
in E minor, so the two hexachords are the one on G ut, ut, fa sol la, and the other one on uh, D ut, ut, re, fa sol la. You can see with colors in order to be more clear. Now, let's play this. And here it's the same, but now. Hmm, same, it seems different. Let's see. So, what's happening? It happens that besides the inversion between the two voices, so the bass becomes the melody and the melody becomes the bass, which is the chiasm, we have another element. Another element for variation. In this point, we have this part an octave down, as you can see. Oops, the blue arc an octave down, as you can clearly see in this point. But we have another thing. Because, yes, let's focus on this point first of all. If I do this, so let's just take a screenshot of this. So, this way, perfect screenshot and as you can see I can put it this way and we would have the same thing at the same octave here the variation consists in transporting the middle thing an octave down so while Fa, Mi, Mi, Re, Re, Ut are in the same octave. And at the same time, in the top voice, all the intervals between, or better, below the, within the arc, are inverted. All of them. So, here we have descending fourth, which becomes ascending fifth. So, descending fourth becomes ascending fifth. Then we have descending third, which becomes ascending sixth. And this passage remains the same. So descending second, as you can see here. Then we have three down, down a third, and down a fourth. So down a third becomes up a sixth, and down a fourth right becomes up a fifth interesting here which is up a sixth as you can see becomes down a third which is actually a tenth because it's um, plus an octave then here we have down a third, down a third becomes up a sixth. Then down a fourth becomes up a fifth. Augmented fourth, diminished fifth. And then up. An augmented fourth becomes then down an augmented fifth. The inversion. And then here up a semitone becomes down a seventh and then down a fifth here so fifth down and down a third becomes up yes this is down a fourth actually down a fourth becomes up a fifth and then up a sixth interesting very interesting, really interesting. And the addition of all these other elements, so the inversion of the intervals, and the inversion of the middle part, which are different, so they're not the same thing, creates this very beautiful variety we have in this piece. And we can learn a lot. You can learn a lot. I can learn a lot. All of us can learn a lot from this 
compositions, for our compositions, improvisations, and our works. Now, before playing the first part of this partita, which is really beautiful, there's one thing you must know. So you can clearly see how knowing all these compositional elements is very important. If you don't know them, you can recognize them in your composition, in a, a composition of a, a piece, in a piece like this, or, and then also you can't apply them in your works if you don't know them. That's why it's very important to study each one of them, to study how they work in order to create your compositions, to combine them and to, to give a beautiful taste to your improvisations and compositions. So, this is, that's why in my one-to-one -one personal coaching session to apprentices, music apprentices, I dedicate so much time to teach all these patterns. Starting, of course, to the most simple one, for example, thirds, sixths, suspensions, because this way you start with the familiar ground, something which is already in your little but important vocabulary. And then I move on to more engaging patterns, more challenging, for example, cadences, all the grand schematas, and chromaticism and additional elements. And this method is effective. It's effective because all the musicians of the past have been using them up until the, the, the end of the 19th century, at least. All the musicians that today <laughs> try the Partimenti, now <laughs> Partimenti are a drug, <laughs> and also for me they are a drug. So this is the method, a method based on Partimenti. So, do this. If you want, I'm here to help you. Just contact me, you can find the link in the description, so that we can schedule a call, a free call, to talk, to discuss about your current situation, what you want to learn, and then let's draw a path that can help you in learning composition, improvisation, and also analysis. Because it's the analysis, the tool that allows you to recognize the element and then to transfer them in your compositions and improvisations. And then, of course, during our path, we can um, freely add other options or uh, study other things. For example, if you want to focus on dances or fugues, imitations or other things, we can then build up a different path. But at the beginning, it's very important to follow the most important thing then that you can find in all the styles and forms. So, write to me, there's a link here in the description, and then see you, of course, in another video.
the musicus practicus knows very well how music is composed. He is familiar with the different patterns that make up a composition. He has a good understanding of the gallant style and he knows how to combine different patterns to create compositions and improvisations as he prefers. The musicus practicus learned all of this by practicing with partimenti. Being able to realize a partimento means truly understanding the language of music in its most intricate nuances. Learning the art of partimento makes the musicus practicus better understand the music he loves, plays and enjoys throughout his days. It enables the musicus practicus to create his own music using the same method employed by the ancient musici practici. And most importantly, it helps the musicus practicus comprehend the mental and compositional process followed by an ancient musicus practicus in composition. With a method I have devised based on the Partimento Magic Box, I had the pleasure of assisting people from around the world with diverse backgrounds and cultures in learning the art of Partimenti and becoming new musici practici. Most of them were not professional musici practici, but passionate ones. Musici practici who carry out their main jobs during the day and dedicate their free time to music. If you like, I can also assist you. Tell me about yourself, your passions, your desires and how I can help you at this link. I will be very happy to read your message and offer you a free video call to build together the perfect journey for you.